How can a man whose hobbies include motor racing, mountaineering and the bullfight be so impassive, impeccable and grave? That is the central mystery behind France's possible president of François Fillon. Detractors say that behind the mask of taciturnity lies a retiring personality ill suited for the task of year of state. Mr. Fillon, they say, is one of nature's lieutenants, a born second in command, a world bleeder without the guts to lead. Far from it, reply his supporters. If the former prime minister is reserved, they say, that is because he has a rich interior life and personal convictions that do not need the reflected affirmation of the media machine. And his path to the top may have been slow. But along the journey he has acquired a wealth of experience. The bid for the presidency, they say, comes from a man finally ready to assume the responsibilities of the office. Mr. Fillon's political career has certainly been a long one. It was in 1981, age 27, that he was first elected as a member of Parliament, becoming the National Assembly's youngest member. His party was the Gaullist RPR of Jacques Chirac. Gaullism features a strong centralized state with conservative and nationalist policies. Mr. Fillon's parents, a history professor mother and lawyer father, were also Gaullist, and he was brought up in comfortable circumstances near the western city of Le Mans. He studied journalism and then law. In 1974 he met his future wife Penelope Clark. She is Welsh and they have five children, the last born in 2001. They live near Le Mans, in the Sarf department which remains Fillon's power base. Mr. Fillon's first ministerial post, higher education, came in 1993 under Prime Minister Edward Ballader. He went on to hold five other cabinet posts, before serving as Prime Minister for five years until 2012 under Nicolas Sarkozy. For nearly all of this time, Mr. Fillon was identified with the movement known as Social Gaullism. His friend and mentor was the late Philippe Seguin, who believed in strong state intervention in the economy and society. Mr. Fillon also shared Seguin's Euroscepticism and in 1992 both men voted against the Maastricht Treaty that ushered in the Euro. Later as social affairs minister under Jacques Chirac, Mr. Fillon had the image of an honest dealer prepared to put in the hours during long negotiations with trade unions. In speech after speech in recent weeks, Mr. Fillon has spoken in cataclysmic terms of France's broken social model, and the need for drastic cuts in state spending. Sometimes you need to tear the whole thing down, he says. Fergus Bart Koenig, of the free market think tank Generation Lieber. The explanation is that since leaving office in 2012 Mr. Fillon underwent a Damascene conversion. He spent the last three years traveling up and down the country. He came to see the exasperation of ordinary people. And how they wanted more than anything to get the state off their backs, he says. Mr. Fillon's garage liberal liberal U-turn is a bold strategy in a country where fans of Margaret Thatcher, as he says he is, are not exactly thick on the ground. He is a practicing Catholic. He is personally opposed to abortion, but says he would never seek to repeal the law. Nor would he seek to ban adoption by gay male couples. Though he wants the law changed so that a child can trace its birth mother. But it is not just left-wingers who see a link between Mr. Fillon's Catholicism, his character, and his policies. For Henry Gaynot, a former Sarkozy advisor, Mr. Fillon believes in redemption through pain, the idea that you need to suffer in order to be saved. He believes the country has lived too luxuriously for too long. So now it needs to make sacrifices. It's like a purge. The same Catholic conviction could explain Mr. Fillon's famous taciturnity, a refusal to be ruffled, that can come across as either old world courtesy or a cold reluctance to engage. And it might also shed light on one of the big questions over his career. Why for five years as Prime Minister he suffered the constant humiliations inflicted by his boss, the man he came to loathe, Nicolas Sarkozy. This is a man who fell in love with motor racing as a child when the Austin Healy team stayed in his village during the Le Mans 24-hour race. He could have become a professional driver. He says he has always had a problem with authority. And as a boy was briefly expelled from school for leading a demonstration against a teacher. 
He despises politicians who think of nothing but politics day and night they are obsessed and unbalanced. Among his other hobbies are mountaineering and piloting drones. His friend and ally, former minister Rosalie in Bachelot, admits the frigid exterior. But she says under the ice there is fire.